On the night of August 7, 2014, a young woman met up with her Tinder date in Australia's Gold Coast. What started as a night of flirting and drinking turned into a nightmare when she fell 14 floors off the man's balcony from his apartment. The audio recording of their date would be picked apart in court, trying to determine if Gable Tosti was guilty of manslaughter. Welcome to Hell is Empty. If you'd like to be the first to know about more true crime videos from us, then please subscribe. Warriana Wright was born in Lower Hutt, New Zealand in 1988. Described by family and friends as warm, bubbly and outgoing, Warriana had a zest for life and a love of adventure. In her mid-twenties, she worked as a customer service representative in Wellington. With a passion for travel and new experiences, Warriana enjoyed exploring new places and was known for her infectious sense of humour and friendly demeanour. In early August 2014, she travelled to the Gold Coast in Queensland, Australia for a friend's wedding. What was meant to be a vacation ended in tragedy just days after her arrival. As a young woman, Warriana was active on social media and, like many people her age, had taken to using dating apps to meet new people. One of those apps was Tinder. It was through here that she connected with Gable Tosti, a 28-year-old Gold Coast resident who would later play a central role in the tragic events leading to her death. Warriana was a visitor in a foreign country, relying on her instincts to meet new people and explore a new city. Unfortunately, her decision to meet with Tosti on the night of August 7, 2014 would result in the unthinkable. Gable Tosti was a 28-year-old resident of Surfer's Paradise on the Gold Coast of Australia. Known for his love of parties, bodybuilding and socialising, Tosti had a reputation among some as a player, someone who used dating apps like Tinder to meet women for casual relationships. His social media presence reflected a man who embraced the fast-paced, glamorous lifestyle of the Gold Coast's nightlife. Despite his outward persona, Tosti's life was not without controversy. His behaviour had raised eyebrows on more than one occasion, with reports surfacing of his confrontational and erratic tendencies. He had previously clashed with law enforcement over unrelated incidents, and his use of dating apps brought him into contact with numerous women, some of whom later described their experiences with him as uncomfortable or even intimidating. At the time of his meeting with Warriana, Tosti was living in a high-rise apartment on the 14th floor of the Avalon building in Surfer's Paradise. The apartment was a symbol of the luxurious, party-centric lifestyle that he had cultivated for himself. What began as a seemingly innocent date on the night of August 7th quickly escalated into a nightmare that would have fatal consequences. Before the tragic events of August 7th, Gable Tosti had already established a complex and sometimes troubling relationship with the law. Although he wasn't considered a hardened criminal, his encounters with law enforcement painted a picture of a man prone to erratic behaviour, confrontation and poor decision-making. These incidents, combined with his controversial lifestyle, would later come to the forefront of the public attention, where he was thrust into the media spotlight. Tosti's trouble with the law began with minor infractions, but they reflected a growing pattern of reckless behaviour. He had been arrested in the years leading up to Warriana's death on charges of public disorder and drunken behaviour, which were often connected to his lifestyle of heavy drinking and partying. These incidents generally involved Tosti becoming involved in altercations or confrontations while intoxicated, leading to police intervention. One notable encounter occurred in 2014, when Tosti was charged with leading police on a high-speed car chase. The incident took place on the Gold Coast, with Tosti reportedly fleeing from officers when they attempted to pull him over for a traffic violation. The chase ended with Tosti being apprehended and charged with dangerous driving. While he avoided jail time, the event highlighted his disregard for authority and his willingness to engage in risky behaviour to avoid facing the consequences of his actions. In another incident, Tosti was involved in a fight at a nightclub. Known for his fondness for bodybuilding and fitness, he had built a muscular physique that made him an intimidating figure in confrontations. This, combined with his often confrontational attitude while intoxicated, led to a few run-ins with security personnel at local clubs. These altercations resulted in him being banned from several venues in the Surfer's Paradise area, further tarnishing his reputation. In 2004, Tosti and a friend were accused of using counterfeit money to purchase alcohol from a bar on the Gold Coast. According to reports, they attempted to pass off fake $50 notes, but the counterfeit bills were quickly identified by staff. When questioned by police, Tosti claimed that he was unaware the money was fake. 
The authorities investigated the matter further, but Tosti managed to avoid serious legal consequences. While Tosti was not formally charged with producing or distributing counterfeit money, the incident added to his growing reputation as someone who engaged in questionable behaviour. This run-in with the law, though not resulting in a criminal conviction, was one of several episodes that painted a picture of a man willing to test boundaries and involve himself in shady activities. On August 6, 2014, Warriana and Gable Tosti matched on Tinder. Warriana, who was in town for a wedding, and Tosti, a regular user of the app, agreed to meet the following day. Their interaction started casually, like many Tinder dates, with little indication of the tragedy that was about to unfold. Warriana and Tosti met on the night of August 7, 2014, around 8pm in the heart of Surfer's Paradise. After a brief meetup at a bar, they made their way back to Tosti's 14th floor apartment in the Avalon building. Inside Tosti's apartment, things began to escalate. The two shared drinks, and Tosti's infamous audio recording from that night, captured on his phone, would later reveal a tense and volatile atmosphere. The audio, over three hours long, recorded the chilling moments leading up to Warriana's death. While the initial part of their date was seemingly uneventful, things took a dark turn as the night progressed. According to the audio, Warriana became increasingly anxious, at one point hitting Tosti with decorative rocks from his apartment. Tosti, increasingly aggravated, accused her of being out of control. The audio recording reveals his growing frustration, and soon the situation escalated to a physical confrontation. Weirdly, Tosti mentions falling off the balcony twice that night. Around 1am, they seem to be having a conversation about death. At 1.06am, Warriana says she is all good with dying. Then she says to Tosti, I know you want to kill me because you told me so. Then they talk a bit about religion, and at 1.09am, Tosti says he doesn't think there is anything after this, this meaning life. He said, you die and that is it. Throw me off the balcony and that is it. This is it. Boom. He then mentions the balcony again later on when the situation escalates. About 30 minutes later, it appears from the recording that Tosti has hidden Warriana's phone, and she is getting stressed and anxious about it. She tells him it's not funny and that she will break his jaw. She asks him to get it, and he tells her that she should get it. She then tells him that she will call the police, and Tosti replies that she can't do that without her phone. At 1.39am, Tosti says, your phone must be out of battery, it must be out on the balcony. Was he trying to get Warriana out onto the balcony already at this point? Tosti then produces the phone and gives it to her. It seems as if he knew where it was all along. Tosti then claims Warriana was beating him up. He said, do you even remember what you were doing to me half an hour ago? You were beating me up for no reason. You thought it was funny or something. Why were you beating me up? He says they should discuss this, and offers her something to eat. It has to be pointed out that Tosti knew he was recording, and he could therefore say anything he wanted to manipulate the situation. When Tosti claimed that Warriana was beating him up, he clarified in court that she said she could do Mai Tai, and was play fighting with him, but he got tired of it. At no point was he actually afraid or seriously hurt by Warriana. But it's fair enough that he asked her to stop, and she didn't. At 1.48am, Warriana asks if she can go over to the window and have a look. Eerily, Tosti says, don't jump off or anything. The situation escalates when the two drink more, and according to Tosti, Warriana is being violent, but it's not clear exactly what she's doing. He can be heard on the recording saying, hey, no violence. At 2.10am, Warriana says, that really hurt my vagina, and Tosti calls her a wuss and insane. Then there is a loud bang, and he says, ow. Then at 2.14am, Tosti says, You are not my kind of girl. You have worn out your welcome. You have to leave. At 2.15am, Tosti says, I thought you were kidding and I have taken enough. This is fucking bullshit. You are lucky I haven't chucked you off my balcony, you goddamn psycho little bitch. At 2.16am, Tosti calls her a goddamn psycho. He then tells her she's going to walk out and if she tries anything, he will knock her out. It appears that Warriana is holding something. Tosti states, let go, you think that you hit me and I was going to fall down like in the movies. Then there are laboured breathing sounds. He states again, let go of it, let go, let go. It was alleged that Tosti was choking Warriana at this point to get her to let go of the object. 
At 2.18am, there are still laboured breathing sounds, and Tosti again says, let it go. At 2.19am, there is the sound of something heavy dropping to the floor as if it was thrown. Then there is a scuffle. It sounds like there is lots of moving around. Seconds later, there is the sound of the balcony door unlocking. Tosti shouts, who the fuck do you think you are, hey? Meanwhile, Warriana is heard saying no repeatedly. Tosti says, you tried to kill me, huh? Well, why did you try and hit me with that, huh? Shut your filthy mouth. Warriana is screaming no. Tosti tells her everything is being recorded, and Warriana repeatedly shouts no and says, just let me go home. Tosti then says, I would, but you have been a bad girl. Then there is the sound of the balcony door sliding shut. At 2.20am, Warriana says, just let me go home, just let me go home. We can hear Tosti's heavy breathing, and then a faint scream is heard, when Warriana falls to her death. At 2.21am, there is very heavy breathing from Tosti, and then he calls his lawyer, but the call is not connected. See, I thought you were kidding, and I've taken enough. This is fucking bullshit. You're lucky I haven't chucked you off my fucking balcony, you goddamn psycho little bitch. Nothing. Who the fuck do you think you are? Yeah, do you Muay Thai now? What? What? Got something to say? Say it. Yeah. Say it. Yeah. What? Shut up, sexist. I'm the one who's injured. You don't have a goddamn scratch on you. Seriously. I do. Seriously, what? Seriously, what? Seriously, what? I thought you were just playing around. I'm fucking sick of this shit. you go. I'm going to walk you out of this apartment. Just the way you are. You're not going to collect any belongings or anything. You're just going to walk out. I'm going to slam the door on you. You understand? If you try to pull anything, I'll knock you out. I'll knock you the fuck out. Do you understand? Do you understand? You understand. Come on, get up. Get up. Fuck up. Get up. Get up. You don't understand, do you? You don't understand anything at all, do you? You don't understand. You don't understand, do you? You just don't understand. Let go. You think you can hit me? And I'll just like, fall down? Like in the movies? Hmm? You don't understand. You do you? Let go of it. Let go. Let go. Let go.
the fuck do you think you are? No! Hmm? No! 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 Why are you trying to kill me, huh? No! no. Why are you trying to hit me with that? No! Huh? No! 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 Warriana sounds highly intoxicated in the audio recording. Perhaps she was confused and afraid of Tosti. Tosti argued that Warriana was violent towards him, but at the end of the day, she was half his size. He was not afraid of her, and that's obvious from the recording. In fact, he makes several attempts to get her to stay and have another drink. He asks her if she wants something to eat. He asks her to sit down, and he asks her to stay the night. He was simply annoyed with her and made various threats when he could have just made her leave. It's inferred in the recording that they were drinking Gable's homemade vodka, which the police would later find, and this could point to the reason that Warriana was so intoxicated. She was probably afraid of what might happen to her, being so impaired and confused in a strange man's apartment. She wanted to call the police, but he had taken her phone. Additionally, the Crown Prosecution claimed that Tosti strangled her, and he told her to get up, after which she said she is sorry. At this point, Warriana was definitely afraid for her life. The defence argued that he locked her out onto the balcony, and desperate to escape, she tried to climb onto the neighbour's balcony, but because she had been drinking, she lost her balance and fell. But Tosti strangely mentioned the balcony a number of times prior to locking her out there. It's curious because falling off the balcony was obviously on his mind. He told Warriana that if he fell off the balcony, that would be it, there would be no afterlife. Later, he told her that she was lucky he hadn't chucked her off the balcony. And then when he took her phone, he said it must be on the balcony. Why were there so many mentions of the balcony if he wasn't thinking about throwing her off it, or getting her to at least go out there? This photo is a police reenactment of how the neighbours saw Warriana hanging from the balcony, mere seconds before she fell. Did Tosti place her over the ledge and she couldn't hold on? Or was she trying to climb down by herself and escape? She screamed no a gut-wrenching 33 times, and it is clear she is scared. Could it be that Tosti placed her over the ledge, and that's why she sounds terrified? There's no evidence to support this, but Tosti said she did not bang or knock on the door to be let back in. Perhaps she couldn't, because of where he had placed her. In the moments after Warriana's fall, Tosti did not immediately call for help. Instead, he remained in his apartment seemingly in shock. He can be heard in the audio recording talking and mumbling to himself. He tried to call his lawyer after Warriana's fall, but the call didn't connect. Rather than reporting the incident to police, Tosti left his apartment and wandered the streets of Surfer's Paradise. 
he eventually called his father outside a Domino's pizza, telling him that a girl had gone crazy and fallen off the balcony. But Tosti lied to his father when he called him that night. He said, last thing that I remember was that I tried holding her down and she ran out onto my balcony. But he testified in court that he bundled her up and put her on the balcony himself. He said, after shutting the door, I turned my back and retreated, and literally about 10 seconds later, when I turned around and looked through the glass, I only briefly, for a fraction of a second, saw Warriana on the other side of the railing before she disappeared out of view. He told his dad I didn't push her. He also said authorities were swarming his apartment building and asked, why does this shit always happen to me? Tosti then ordered a slice of supreme pizza. The response from Tosti in the immediate aftermath of Warriana's death would become a significant point of contention in the ensuing legal battle. His decision to leave the scene rather than call for help raised questions about his actions that night and whether they reflected guilt or panic. As the investigation unfolded, the audio recording from Tosti's phone would become central to the case, shedding light on the final moments of Warriana's life and offering chilling insight into the events leading up to her tragic death. Warriana's fall from the 14th floor apartment triggered an immediate police investigation. Witnesses in the area had heard her screams and the loud thud when her body hit the ground. Emergency services were called to the scene, but it was clear that Warriana had not survived the fall. Within hours, the police were combing through the area for clues. They discovered that Warriana had been in Tosti's apartment just before her death, and he quickly became a person of interest. The police gathered CCTV footage from the Avalon building, which captured Tosti leaving the apartment shortly after the fall, and found the audio recording from his phone, which would later become a key piece of evidence. After analysing the evidence, the police arrested Gable Tosti on August 15, 2014, charging him with the murder of Warriana Wright. The arrest was widely covered in the media, with Tosti's strange behaviour and the chilling audio recording becoming the focal point of the case. Tosti was taken into custody and questioned by detectives. During his interview, he continued to maintain that Warriana's death was an accident. He claimed that she had attacked him, and that his decision to lock her out on the balcony was a defensive move to prevent her from harming him further. Tosti's defence emphasised that he had not physically forced Warriana over the balcony, arguing that her intoxicated state and panic had led to her fall. But as we said before, Warriana was half Tosti's size. He was not afraid of her, and he could have got her to leave his apartment at any time, but there were many instances where he asked her to stay, so he could not have been that afraid of her. And in fact, it was Tosti who was physical with her when he strangled her. The prosecution faced the challenge of proving that Tosti's actions directly caused Warriana's death, even though there was no evidence that he had physically thrown her off the balcony. Instead, the case hinged on whether Tosti's aggressive behaviour, restraint and decision to lock Warriana outside created the conditions that led to her death. To establish their case, the prosecution charged Tosti with murder, contending that he had deliberately endangered Warriana's life by forcing her onto the balcony and locking the door, knowing she was distressed and intoxicated. Alternatively, they also argued that Tosti's actions amounted to manslaughter, implying that even if her death was not intentional, his reckless conduct directly contributed to the fatal incident. The prosecution's central argument revolved around the idea that Tosti created a dangerous environment for Warriana, which led to her fatal attempt to escape. They pointed to the audio recording, which captured Tosti forcing her onto the balcony, as evidence that he knowingly put her in a vulnerable position. The prosecution portrayed Tosti as a man who had lost control of the situation and escalated it instead of calming it down. They argued that Tosti's decision to lock her on the balcony, knowing she was intoxicated and fearful, showed a disregard for her safety. The fact that Tosti left the apartment after her fall and failed to call emergency services was also used as an example of his callousness and lack of concern for her well-being. Additionally, the prosecution highlighted Tosti's aggressive language during the argument, including the moment he told Warriana, you're lucky I haven't thrown you off my balcony. This statement, they argued, demonstrated his potential for violence and underscored the danger she was in that night. Additionally, he took her phone at one point, causing her to panic. Had she needed to call someone for her own safety, she couldn't. She also asked Tosti to let her go home, but he told her no, she had been a bad girl. 
It therefore seems that Tosti had many opportunities to let Warriena leave or even force her out of his apartment, but he chose not to. Instead, he chose to lock her out on the balcony. He was purposely punishing her instead of allowing her to leave. The defense's case was built around the argument that Warriena's death was a tragic accident, not the result of deliberate actions by Gable Tosti. They contended that while the events of the night were undeniably traumatic, Tosti's decision to lock Warriena outside was an attempt to de-escalate the situation, not to harm her. The defense argued that Tosti had been the victim of Warriena's erratic behavior, pointing to her intoxication and aggressive actions inside the apartment, such as throwing decorative rocks at him. They asserted that Tosti restrained Warriena to protect himself, and that he only locked her on the balcony to prevent further violence. But throwing small rocks at him and choking her are not the same. His level of violence towards her was not reasonable, even if he was trying to protect himself. A key element of the defense's case was the fact that Tosti did not physically push Warriena over the balcony. They claim that she attempted to climb down due to her intoxicated and panicked state, ultimately leading to her accidental fall. The defense also emphasized that Tosti had recorded the audio to protect himself, demonstrating that he had no intention of harming Warriena. Furthermore, the defense attempted to humanize Tosti, arguing that his unusual behavior after the incident, such as wandering the streets and calling his father and ordering pizza, was the result of shock and fear, not guilt. For the prosecution, the recording painted a vivid picture of Tosti's escalating anger and control over Warriena. They used it to demonstrate how he had intimidated her, physically restrained her, and ultimately forced her onto the balcony, leading to her tragic death. The defense, however, argued that the recording proved Tosti had not been acting out of malice. They pointed to moments where Tosti told Warriena to calm down, and insisted that his actions were aimed at defusing the situation. The defense also noted that Tosti had not threatened her directly, but instead had locked her outside for both of their safety. Several key witnesses were called during the trial. The prosecution relied on expert testimony, including forensic specialists who analyzed the audio recording and CCTV footage. They sought to establish that Warriena's behavior on the balcony was a direct response to the fear and distress caused by Tosti's actions. The defense, on the other hand, focused on witnesses who could attest to Tosti's state of mind. They brought in psychologists who testified about his shock and trauma following the death. Additionally, character witnesses were called to paint a picture of Tosti as someone who had no history of violence or aggression towards women. Prosecutor Cash stressed that although Tosti did not physically push Warriena from the balcony, his actions placed her in a position where she felt she had no choice but to try and escape. Cash told the jury, the accused had locked Warriena right on a balcony high above the ground, leaving her no viable means of retreat. He argued that Tosti's behavior led directly to her fatal fall. Defense lawyer Saul Holt presented Tosti as the victim of a tragic accident, emphasizing that he had not forced Warriena to her death. Holt described Warriena's actions as the result of intoxication and panic, and he portrayed Tosti's decision to lock her out as a reasonable response to her erratic behavior. He argued that the prosecution's case was built on speculation and assumptions rather than hard evidence. Holt told the jury he didn't push her, he didn't throw her, and he reminded the jury that the ultimate tragedy was not a result of physical violence by Tosti. However, he was physically violent with her when he choked her. For the prosecution, forensic experts analyzed the audio recording, breaking it down into individual moments to demonstrate the tension between Tosti and Warriena. They argued that her fall was not a result of random panic, but a direct response to the fear and isolation she felt after being locked outside. Several witnesses who were nearby at the time of the incident testified that they had heard screaming and crashing sounds coming from Tosti's apartment before the fatal fall. The defense brought in psychological experts to testify about Tosti's state of mind and his actions during the altercation. They focused on his decision to record the entire incident, suggesting that he had done so out of fear of being blamed for any potential outcome. But this infers that he had been blamed for something before and has now started to record his dates with women. They also presented witnesses who testified to Tosti's shock and emotional turmoil in the immediate aftermath. One notable moment came when Tosti's father, Grey Tosti, took the stand. He recounted his son's panicked phone call following Warriena's death, in which Gable told him, something terrible has happened. 
The defense used this testimony to show that Tosti was overwhelmed and in shock, rather than displaying the cold and calculating demeanor suggested by the prosecution. Another significant piece of evidence presented during the trial was the CCTV footage from the night of the death. The footage showed Tosti leaving his apartment shortly after the incident, walking calmly through the streets and ordering pizza. The prosecution highlighted this behavior as evidence of Tosti's indifference and lack of remorse. They argued that a man who had just witnessed a tragic accident would not behave in such a detached manner. The defense, however, contended that Tosti's actions were not indicative of guilt, but of shock. They argued that his decision to leave the apartment and avoid the scene was born out of fear and confusion, rather than malice. The defense emphasized that Tosti had not tried to hide his involvement, and that he had called his father immediately after the incident to explain what happened. But he still didn't call emergency services. Throughout the trial, media coverage played a significant role in shaping public perception of the case. Headlines often sensationalized the details, focusing on Tosti's online dating profile, the audio recording, and his actions following Warriana's death. The media's portrayal of Tosti as a playboy, with a detached attitude towards women, influenced how the public viewed him, and added pressure on the legal teams to prove their cases beyond what was presented in court. After the closing arguments, the jury was left with the daunting task of deciding Gable Tosti's fate. The primary question they had to answer was whether Tosti's actions amounted to criminal responsibility for Warriana's death. Specifically, they were asked to determine whether his conduct had been reckless or negligent enough to warrant a conviction for manslaughter. On October 20th, 2016, after four days of deliberation, the jury reached a verdict. Gable Tosti was found not guilty of the manslaughter of Warriana Wright. The jury concluded that while Tosti's behavior may have been inappropriate, it did not meet the legal standard for manslaughter. They determined that Warriana's decision to climb over the balcony railing was an act of her own accord, and that Tosti could not be held criminally responsible for her death. The courtroom was silent as the verdict was read, with Tosti showing little emotion in response. His defense team expressed relief, while Warriana's family, who had flown in from New Zealand for the trial, was visibly devastated by the outcome. When talking about his feelings after Warriana's death, Tosti appears to show regret. He said, I broke down in tears several times a day, or whenever I saw her picture in the news. I never expected I would ever experience something like this, nor did I have any idea how much it would affect me. Even though I had only known her for a night, I was horrified that this had happened to her. I would never wish for it to happen to anybody. The public reaction to the verdict was deeply divided. Some viewed the jury's decision as just, agreeing that Tosti had not physically caused Warriana's death and had been unfairly vilified by the media. Supporters of the verdict argued that the trial had demonstrated the complexities of the case, particularly in terms of self-defense and personal responsibility. However, others were outraged by the acquittal, believing that Tosti's actions, his threatening remarks locking Warriana outside, and his behavior after the incident were indicative of guilt. Many people questioned the morality of his conduct, arguing that even if it didn't meet the legal definition of manslaughter, his actions had played a critical role in creating the conditions that led to her death. After the trial, Gable Tosti, who had legally changed his name to Eric Thomas, attempted to resume a normal life. However, his infamy made this difficult. The public viewed him with a mixture of suspicion and intrigue, and he remained a controversial figure in the media long after the trial. Tosti tried to keep a low profile, but was often thrust back into the spotlight. His social media accounts were scrutinized, and any public statement he made was quickly picked up by tabloids. In interviews, Tosti maintained his innocence and reiterated that Warriana Wright's death was a tragic accident. He often expressed frustration at being labeled a killer by some segments of the media, despite his acquittal. However, Tosti's arrogance and general twattishness didn't help him. He joked about Warriana's death online and continued to use Tinder. In 2021, he was involved in a dispute with a woman named Sabrina Collins, who alleged she received abusive text messages from a female friend of Tosti's after they had stopped seeing each other. She also alleged that Tosti had shown her what happened the night Warriana died. She said, he was showing me, and then he locked me on the balcony to show me what it was like. Tosti denied this ever happened, and said Collins was insane. In 2022, Tosti was found naked and trapped inside his car after crashing it. He was charged with driving under the influence, but this charge was dismissed. 
It seems that Gable Tosti has nine lives. He has evaded jail time for every charge he's faced. From driving under the influence to counterfeit money, he has got away with everything. Will his luck one day run out? Or will Gable Tosti, now Eric Thomas, continue to escape consequences of his actions? Thank you for watching and please subscribe for more videos.